here today we're going to talk about Jakarta EE, as you probably saw. And who better to tell us about Jakarta EE and cloud native uh, stuff with uh, better than Tanya, who actually works there, and she has quite some experience with it. So I'll leave the floor to you, Tanya. Thanks so much. Can you hear me okay? Is it too loud? It comes to me as a too loud, but that's fine. So, um, as this, I understand, is English-speaking conference, I will continue in English. Um, and uh, as announced, I work for Eclipse Foundation, and I'm particularly working on Jakarta E project. So today, I will be talking a little bit, and let me just figure out how to go from slide to slide here. Okay, it seems that I can only do this. Nope. Okay, let me restart it. Maybe now. Okay. Nope. Just okay. Technical difficulties. In the meanwhile, so yes, I work for Eclipse Foundation. Uh, I want to talk about what Eclipse Foundation does, a little bit about open source software. Um, I want to list some of the um, cloud Java related uh, projects that are um, hosted at Eclipse Foundation. And then I want to move uh, into uh, Jakarta EE. So, um, Okay, I think we're good to go. So go, going through the agenda again, um, you know, projects, uh, the big move, you will see what is uh, the big move all about, Jakarta E. what are the um, plans for the future of Jakarta E, and then uh, inviting everyone to be part of the um, open source community. So um, about the Eclipse Foundation, so it is a um, non-profit organization. It is a foundation that deals with open source software and projects related to open source software. And um, it does provide, um, let's say, four different type of services um, to anyone who is participating in open source. Welcome, welcome. Um, <clears throat> So, one thing that uh, uh, open source, and I believe this is a uh, um, case for majority of the open source foundations, we do provide the uh, infrastructure and what that means really is the um, code repository, um, uh, bug database, um, IP uh, database, websites, wiki. So, all the um, uh, infrastructure really uh, to support the open source projects. Um, we also ensure that, that uh, there is a process in government, so process in terms of any development needs to um, kind of uh, uh, guidance in terms of what is the expectation when you're developing software. So um, Eclipse Foundation is actually dealing with uh, or using Eclipse development process for um, uh, developing any uh, coding projects. We will see a little bit later again. Um, that uh, we are going to use um, uh, for Jakarta, that is a specification uh, development, deals with specification development. Um, we're using something that we call and refer to as a, a Jakarta E specification process. In terms of the governance, uh, just quickly, um, uh, there are rules of engagement. So what we're trying to do, the, 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 all the parties that are involved in open source software, um, uh, that they have a level playing field and um, that there are um, established rules in how a projects are being governed. We also have a staff uh, that is dealing with the community development, so, um, you know, uh, business development people who are uh, um, whose focus is uh, growing the community, marketing, professional marketing team, organizing the uh, different events uh, for, you know, uh, promotion of different uh, projects. 
uh, and then team that is also dedicated to uh, IP and management. And that is uh, uh, the whole licensing and intellectual property um, cleansiness of the, of, the prod of the projects. So extremely important if anyone was involved in the open source um, software, um, uh, they know to what degree that part is important. So uh, if anyone heard of Eclipse Foundation, in my experience, most of the um, association with Eclipse Foundation is Eclipse IDE. Has anyone used Eclipse IDE before? Yeah. So that is just one of the projects at uh, Eclipse Foundation. So you can see here we have over or close to uh, 370 uh, open source projects. Um, uh, a little bit less than 300 uh, members, um, not to mention the number of committers, lines of code. Um, it's a small company in terms of the staff, so it's about 30 plus people. And uh, we'll talk uh, uh, about the different organizations, how the, the, the projects are being uh, organized and governed, but at this point I'll just mention we're uh, dealing with uh, a little bit more than 10 um, working groups, which is the unit that uh, organizes a project. So what are the focus areas? So um, I'm here to talk about Jakarta E and Cloud Native Java, but uh, there are different uh, pillars, which is IoT and Edge, and I know um, there are people in Belgrade who are involved in, in, in that part as well. Uh, there is automotive industry and um, you know, with, the, with the, the autonomous driving and, and related fields, that is uh, certainly a field that is uh, uh, being, uh, it's in, in expansion and, and um, it is uh, very interesting um, to get involved in that as well, uh, particularly um, big in Europe and, and, and Germany. And then um, uh, the last pillar here is uh, uh, development tools, one of them being uh, Eclipse ID and different variations on, on, on Eclipse ID. So how does everything work? So we call ourselves that we are open source software company that is open for innovation at industrial scale. So what exactly does that mean? Um, so with our governance processes, as, as this slide is showing, um, with, the, with the governing processes, we enable uh, different companies and individuals to collaborate together on the project, develop the technology, and then afterwards they can build competitive uh, products and be, uh, you know, uh, fearless competitors among each other. But um, what, what, what the, um, uh, the beauty is, is that collective um, development of the technology. Um, you will see in a bit when we start focusing on um, Jakarta E that is uh, uh, particularly important in that field. Has anyone heard of Java EE before? Okay, so um, Jakarta EE is continuation of Java EE and we, we know to what degree that technology is important and embedded in um, many um, enterprise systems. So. Moving on, uh, I'll just list some of the projects, other cloud native uh, projects at Eclipse Foundation. So um, uh, obviously Jakarta E uh, as the uh, collection of specifications, but um, also um, Eclipse Glassfish, um, now called Eclipse Glassfish, previously called just Glassfish, is also one of the projects. Uh, micro profile, uh, we'll touch on it a little bit um, uh, uh, in a minute, which is basically um, uh, an answer to uh, the new uh, microservices demand in the um, cloud uh, native or cloud uh, Java technology, right? Eclipse J, which is the ID that is geared towards the cloud. Um, uh, Jetty, I, I think uh, most of the uh, people are already familiar with the, uh, the, the as, as a web server, Open uh, J9, um, uh, as, as JVM, Eclipse Jemo, you will, you will see a, a slide on that, and I'm happy to say that uh, 
uh, Vertex seems to be uh, also popular here and some people were even contributors to uh, that project as well. So uh, MicroProfile, yesterday on the um, unconference event, we touched on it uh, uh, just a little bit. Um, it's an answer, uh, as you may know, for, for Java E for years, it, it, it wasn't really addressing some of the needs in terms of the um, uh, uh, microservices development or microservices demands. So uh, MicroProfile is a project that um, was initiated by, uh, by uh, very well-known uh, companies who have their investments uh, in Java. And it started about three years ago, but it's really in the last two years, it's, it's really taking off uh, uh, quite well um, in terms of the uh, adoption as well as the um, uh, compatible implementations uh, that uh, are implementing these specifications. As I was saying, um, it is a, a set of specifications geared towards um, uh, the uh, Java developers. It fits really well within the um, uh, developers who are uh, familiar with Java EE, and uh, um, I'm, I was happy to hear yesterday that uh, some of you are already familiar with it. So what are the set of expectation, uh, sorry, specifications uh, for, for micro uh, profile? So here is the slide. Um, this is going to be released in version 3.1. And uh, um, the, uh, the release date is uh, October 8th. Um, here is the set of uh, uh, implementations and companies that are uh, involved in um, defining these specifications. So uh, I'm sure some of the names are um, very familiar um, to uh, most of you. And a um, similar group of companies is also involved in, in, in Java EE, or rather, sorry, Jakarta EE. So um, Eclipse J is really the ID that doesn't need any installation. So it is cloud-based. Uh, it is uh, geared to work with different uh, um, cloud-related technologies. Um, Kubernetes is uh, listed here, right? Um, so it is uh, a very um, popular. It's, it's gaining in popularity as the uh, ID that is uh, addressing the needs of the um, cloud uh, Java developers, Eclipse Jain, uh, Eclipse Open Jain as uh, Open J9, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the JVM that actually is uh, uh, geared towards um, again the needs of cloud uh, with uh, the um, you know uh, smaller footprint. Um, uh, enables uh, rapid uh, start time, um, uh, thinking about uh, the, the performance, um, all the keywords that are uh, necessary for, for the, the, the cloud native. It is, um, we also mentioned yesterday, uh, Graal uh, VM, uh, in a way uh, trying to address the, uh, the, the similar needs. Um, Eclipse JMO, uh, so it is uh, the project that is trying to address different um, uh, needs or, or it is uh, trying to uh, figure out how to do not only fast, as, as it's saying here, um, function as a service, um, but also pass on, on multiple uh, clouds. So um, uh, the, the, the project is really um, it, it, it the beginning um, of its, uh, um, it, it was recently actually contributed to open source. It is uh, um, uh, at the beginning in terms of the um, adoption. So it is a great time to get involved and see um, uh, how you can contribute and be part of this. Okay, so I will not spend much time on any other projects because I want to focus primarily on um, Jakarta EE. So what is the big move? So um, Java EE as the technology, as the set of frameworks um, two years ago, 
um, Oracle has announced that uh, they're uh, planning to contribute uh, this to uh, Eclipse Foundation to actually open source uh, and, and more specifically to Eclipse Foundation. Why Eclipse Foundation? It's one of the uh, foundations that has a, a, a long uh, um, involvement with uh, Java as a language, so that seemed like a natural fit. Um, so at, at that point, we also um, uh, were looking into what does community, open source community, uh, think about uh, uh, the name, right? Uh, especially because Java is a, um, uh, the trademark of Oracle. And uh, uh, most of uh, the um, answers were, uh, or suggestions were geared towards uh, Jakarta E. As, as some of the, you may know, Jakarta and Java have a long standing history because uh, it, it, the whole Java originated in, 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 in Jakarta at some point um, as a name, and uh, uh, it seems that community uh, liked that uh, connection and wanted to uh, continue with the name Jakarta E. So basically, it's continuation of uh, um, Java E. So why Java E? As some of you uh, already indicated, uh, the amount of Java developers in the world is still uh, the number one. So it seems that that is the dominant um, uh, uh, language, programming language still. Um, there is uh, uh, tons of Java E applications um, uh, out there um, that were kind of hesitant or observing what is going on with the, with the, the cloud technology. Uh, and as Java EE was lacking um, in, you know, advancement in the last few years, um, it, it is a good time to, um, you know, for, for Eclipse Foundation and the whole community to jump on, uh, make sure that not only Java is a language, which is, uh, um, you know, Java SE and Oracle is stealing, uh, still dealing with that, uh, developing the, the language base itself, but for us to uh, develop the set of specifications as well. So um, why, I, why, why, just uh, we probably are guessing, but why are organizations still um, interested in Java E? Some of the surveys that, that, that were run uh, suggest that, uh, uh, as it stated here, stability, the fact it's standards and specifications and uh, um, availability of the de developers. I would also add uh, probably compatibility is one of the, the reasons why um, uh, Java EE is, is uh, so popular. So having said all of that, now that we have uh, all the uh, Java E specifications uh, contributed to uh, open source um, you know, software and into Eclipse Foundation, we organized uh, a Jakarta E working group, uh, which is the group that actually, um, as it's state, stated here, you know, uh, approves specifications, uh, manages and drives the Jakarta E brand, um, establishes the uh, technical direction and, and roadmap, um, ensures the, the compatibility um, with uh, open source technology compatibility kits, um, uh, it, it grows community and, and so on. So that in, in a way is a governing body uh, behind the um, Jakarta E. So who is in the working group? So we have uh, at this point uh, six strategic member and 11 participating members. And uh, those are the um, big corporations who have um, interest in uh, developing, further developing te technology. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, based on the specifications, they're developing their own um, uh, products, compatible products, uh, that are competitors on the market. Um, why is that important? Well, it's, it's important that um, uh, it's, it's a level playing field, that uh, um, there is no monopoly, and there is vendor neutrality in the technology. 
once the companies start building their own um, compatible products, they can uh, build it based on the specifications and figure out whether they want to uh, differentiate themselves with some additional uh, features. But the core technology is exactly the same. And they're working together to develop that uh, technology. What also is important to say that previously when it was with Oracle, it was um, uh, dominated by uh, what um, Oracle needs are. So the direction, um, there, were, there is a big distinction, distinction between vendor neutrality and um, you know, uh, what, what we had before with, uh, um, when it was resided at Oracle. So at Eclipse Foundation, just quickly, um, you know, I mentioned uh, a little bit less than 380 uh, projects. Just uh, Jakarta EE uh, is um, equivalent to about 39 projects at this point. Um, and you can see uh, all, the, all the other stats there. So... Um, while at Oracle, um, you are probably all familiar with the JCP. So that is the process that was used to develop different um, uh, uh, JSRs and uh, evolve Java, uh, uh, Java uh, language completely, but uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, Java uh, EE. Now, for Eclipse, in, at the Eclipse Foundation, what we did, we created um, an open specification process, and we call it Jakarta E specification process. Um, it is based on the Eclipse uh, development process, um, but it's uh, tailored further to the specifications. So, um, what are the, 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 the key differences between uh, what JCP had and what Jakarta uh, E specification process has? Uh, I listed my uh, top five, uh, if you will, uh, here, and I'll just quickly explain what exactly do I mean by this. So, um, JCP was um, really big on developing the specification first, so meaning the specification um, document and, and the instructions on how to um, uh, uh, do the implementation. So what Jakarta is, is uh, um, specification process does is try to encourage code first. So try to try something out um, in code, figure out whether that idea uh, works, figure out whether um, that idea uh, is uh, um, uh, accepted by the community and is something that is really needed. And, um, you know, uh, uh, after that, not once you're completely finished with your coding, but when you see that this idea makes sense, then start uh, developing the, the specification. JCP um, is uh, uh, really uh, geared towards um, uh, uh, having a spec lead who has the ultimate authority in terms of uh, gearing up uh, uh, or directing uh, the development of the uh, specification. What a uh, Jakarta e process does is um, uh, insist on collaborative approach. So um, even though we do have project leads, um, there is no need to, um, th there is no special role for a, sp uh, a specification lead, except to ensure that uh, the team is continuously engaged and we don't have the project that is kind of uh, dying off uh, just because of the um, lack of communication or rather regular communication. So uh, documents and TCKs are completely open source. Um, that is, uh, uh, some would say, the major difference from before. So now when you're testing um, your products for, uh, in, for purpose of certification, you can see exactly how that code looks like. You can um, object to some of the tests. You can contribute some of the tests and, and be, uh, uh, and it's definitely uh, more open. Previously, uh, TCKs uh, were completely closed off and uh, 
when people were submitting their products for certification, they were um, just informed on uh, uh, passed or failed. This time around, it is uh, uh, completely open and transparent. Oops, sorry. Um, in JCP, we also had one implementation that was um, uh, called reference implementation, and that was typically uh, Glassfish, uh, was used as a reference implementation of any new version of uh, uh, Java EE. This time around, we have compatible implementations. And uh, um, uh, 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 the requirement is to have one on or more compatible implementation, so at least one. Uh, that will prove validity of the specification. Um, the certification process itself has changed now. The requirement is for each user to do self-certification with the obligation to provide their um, certification results uh, publicly. So I already mentioned, so those are the principles that are uh, now put in place. It is the uh, transparency, so everyone has insight into uh, understanding how the process works, how the code looks like, how the certification works, and then uh, that opens to openness. So it is open to a wide community to uh, review, to participate, comment, contribute in, in various way, ways. Um, that also means that openness, that it's a shared burden, so um, it is a, a, a responsibility of the whole community to make sure that uh, uh, the, there is a progress in, in, in uh, um, uh, developing the specifications. Um, and also uh, what, what this means, and it's extremely uh, a valid point, I would say, is vendor, vendor neutrality. So um, even though we have companies who are uh, bigger or smaller um, leveled uh, uh, field is extremely important and everyone has a voice in terms of um, direction of the technology. So this is just a slide that will briefly, uh, is briefly showing um, how the specification process looks like now. And if you kind of, uh, um, uh, eliminate or, or put the blind eye to those dotted boxes, uh, um, which are um, reviews that are put in place, um, you can see that it's not drastically different from any other development process. So Jakarta EE, finally uh, talking about Jakarta EE, um, what is it all about? So that is uh, on September 10th, we released the very first version of um, Jakarta EE that is exactly equivalent to Java EE. So uh, that means the, the intention there is to, first of all, all the code is now residing at Eclipse Foundation. Uh, uh, we have open source uh, TCKs, um, everyone can uh, run uh, those and see uh, how the code looks like. Uh, we focused on the two major specifications, which is full platform and uh, the um, uh, web uh, platform. And uh, uh, we are, uh, web profile rather, and uh, we are actually um, ensuring that there is a continuation. Everyone who was on Java E can seamlessly go into uh, Jakarta E, and that is the base layer for advancing and uh, further development of, of Java E. So it is fully compatible with uh, Java E. Um, I will not focus too much on, on Java's namespace, uh, but for this version, um, that we are using, um, there is no difference in terms of the, the namespace. If you're familiar, there is a little bit of the, um, again, restrictions from Oracle in terms of uh, the Java trademark. So at some point we will uh, deal with the, the, the change of the namespace, but for this version, we uh, did not have to do that just to enable all the users to seamlessly um, uh, transition to uh, a Jakarta E version. 
So just a listing exactly uh, what it is. So it is the full compatibility with Java E, open specifications, open source uh, TCK, uh, compatible implementation on the day of the release. We already had uh, three compatible uh, implementations released uh, uh, that very day. Um, the same platform integration requirements as, as uh, uh, Java EE and uh, uh, fully transparent branding process as well. Everything published um, on the uh, website as well. So what is the website? It's uh, Jakarta EE. I'm just showing here a couple of slides, uh, um, couple of screenshots rather, um, just to indicate that, uh, um, and probably you cannot even see it there, but um, Jakarta E and off of that Jakarta E uh, release and then Jakarta E specifications where you can find the information. Um, let me just, so those are our three compatible uh, implementations. Uh, I want to mention uh, Jakarta One live stream. Uh, we did it also on the release date, September 10th. Um, there is uh, uh, 18 hours of content. Uh, anyone who is interested, um, it is available right now for replay. And if you go to jakartaone.org, uh, all the sessions, uh, keynotes, live coding, uh, all of it is available there. So um, this is the, the website, and uh, please uh, go and visit. So what is next for Jakarta E? So we have um, kind of a rough uh, roadmap here. We started with Glassfish 5.0, um, and uh, uh, you know that was Java E8. Then we had Glassfish. Um, uh, Eclipse Glassfish, so the project that was contributed to Eclipse, um, we wanted that to be certified with the Java E8, making sure nothing is, uh, is broken. Then we have now Eclipse Glassfish 5.1 um, certified on uh, Jakarta E8, and uh, we're looking uh, forward and, and already making plans for Jakarta E. Uh, we are going to deal at that point with the uh, um, new namespace. As I said, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Java X namespace is, is uh, uh, something that we need to uh, deal with. Um, we are hoping that Java SE 11 will be supported. Um, we are going to invite community to, and actually all of these discussions have started and you can find it um, off of the website. Uh, what exactly, if anything, needs to be deprecated uh, and not needed to be evolved uh, going forward? And then what else um, can be done? Uh, we already have proposal for uh, new specifications. One of them is Jakarta NoSQL and then Jakarta Batch as well. Um, and we have a full list um, that we received from the community as well on what um, do they want to see going forward in, in Jakarta 9 or future releases. So at this point, I would just want to invite uh, um, you to uh, figure out how you can get involved in, in open source. So um, just to stress out, not all the work is coding work, right? So um, uh, open source is community of not just companies, but uh, uh, individuals who um, either believe in technology or want to learn something on te technology. Everyone needs to figure out what is their um, interest in uh, being the part of open source community. So uh, marketing and promotion, promotional work, uh, please connect on social media. Um, if you want to be active, write blogs, um, uh, present and, and, and share the knowledge uh, in the community. So this is not only for Jakarta E, but any open source project. Of course, my invite to you is uh, uh, focusing on um, Jakarta E, but um, you know, the principle uh, is the same. So uh, technical work as well, um, uh, coding, start uh, looking into different projects and what exactly is your need for um, Jakarta EE and how to involve that. Um, technical work, um, uh, uh, sorry, collateral work, so explaining the technology and building materials 
uh, to explain the technology is uh, uh, something that uh, is also always needed. I listed here a couple of pointers how to really connect with us and also how to um, uh, start tuning in what's going on with uh, um, Jakarta E. So if you have uh, an event or want to create event that is uh, Jakarta E related, uh, please let us know about it. We have monthly or bi-monthly, depending on um, uh, you know on a month or and the season. We have Jakarta Tech Talks. Please um, um, uh, join in. Um, we have uh, Jakarta blogs, as I mentioned already, and um, uh, you can jump on um, writing about those as well. In terms of uh, being involved as a contributor or a committer, I purposely put here a couple of uh, um, slides that uh, um, are actually showing what, what is needed from you in terms of the paperwork to ensure the uh, IP um, is um, you know, taken care of. So um, you can get familiar with that. Um, some additional links just to make them handy to you in terms of the um, uh, getting familiar with the working group, um, some of the projects and where you can find the projects uh, um, in, uh, and what is the top level project for uh, Jakarta E. Uh, GitHub links where you can find the information and discussions on the uh, platform, Jakarta e platform. I want to invite you to consider uh, coming to Eclipse Foundation Conference that is uh, 21st, I believe, of October. Um, please have a, have a look and if you have a chance, uh, um, join in. There is also a community day. Um, so community day, what does that mean? So community is organizing events for the community, right? So if you are interested to take part, um, check that out. And uh, that's everything I have. So I hope we have a few minutes for questions or discussion or concerns or anything else. Yeah. Jokes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anything? Feedback? Thank you, Tanya. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. ID? Why did we leave ID? No, we didn't. Oh, 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 you mean like in the why is not like for years it was top one and, and now you feel it's not as. So, well, depends who you talk to. There are tons of people who think that it's extremely important and it's being used, but I do understand what your po the point is that you, be you believe your observation is that it's uh, not as dominant as it used to be, is right? In the in in the field. So, so, here, so here is my answer. Regardless of what the issue is um, in terms of um, what is not there, present there in ID right now, it is actually like I would encourage you to log an issue in the GitHub and ask why don't we have this, right? So keep in mind this is not Eclipse Foundation that is developing, it's the community out there, right? So, so if you see something is missing, or anyone is seeing something is missing, um, the right thing to handle that is um, log an issue, and um, especially for ID that has such a community around it, you know, there might be uh, more than you who is um, observing the same problem, and therefore, uh, the investment will put in place to uh, address the issue.
Does that help? Okay, no problem. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're, we're running a bit late on time. Uh, I'm sorry. I will invite you to ask Tanya after. Yeah. That's okay, you'll say after, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be here so uh, we can chat. I'm Thanks. really sorry because we're uh, a bit late, so we're going to be a bit late for the next session, about five minutes. Uh, I want to thank Tanya for presenting us with Java EE and introducing us.